I say buy this, buy that, get this, get that. Well, today I'm actually going to be talking to you guys of what am I looking at getting myself. Now, one of my goals for this year is more on the collection side of things, not so much on the investing side of things. Now, for the investing side of things will be in an upcoming video, but today I'm talking about what I want to have in my collection. And this goes for the specific cards that i am after to add into my collection i like to collect cards which obviously i like the main thing i look for in cards i like is either just my favorite pokemon now i have a whole range of different po I have a whole range of different pokemon that i absolutely love there's actually an old video on this channel where i go through like my top favorite pokemon i think i need to do an update because there's been quite a few new ones since then but then on top of that i also look at just the artwork now to me it's artwork is key artwork that feature multiple pokemon to me is really really key one of the reasons why i really like the tag team cards from the sun and moon era they're some of my favorite looking cards some of them are not really a huge amount of value but they are still super duper cool so today i'm going to be going through cards that i am after to add into my collection if you have any of these cards that you are either looking to trade or to sell then let me know guys and message me over on discord or on instagram and we can sort something out all right let's jump into these all right first on my list is the god of war for palo and face now i've opened up a decent amount of palo and face at the moment and i've still have yet to pull this card now, I pulled it before on the stream. I kind of feel like the special illustration rares are super tough to pull in Palais and Fates. I have managed to pull two, but none of them are of the Guard of War so far. And I've opened up roughly around 100 packs so far. So I've got a few more packs still to open when the booster bundles drop. Hey, look, I might still pull it yet, so I'm not too sure. But still, this is one of my favorite cards in the set. Absolutely gorgeous. Now, I only collect English cards, although I am starting to think that I might want to start going into Japanese cards, just because the card quality of those Japanese cards are fantastic. They really, really are. And on top of that, the card quality is very, very good. I mainly collect English cards. However, I'm looking at diving into Japanese cards as well, mainly because they are awesome. You know, the card quality is really nice. I think the cards actually look a lot better, especially in Scarlet Violet era. I think the EXs and things like that just really shine and pop really, really nice. So that's one thing I'm looking at. But anyway, today... Gardevoir, this card has been dropping in price. We are looking at Pokedeo today, not TCG player. And yeah, this card's been dropping in price. I mean, over here in the UK, I've been seeing some people sell this. But anywhere between 40 to 45 pounds. So it has dropped a significant amount uh, since its release. And I think it will continue to drop as well with more and more Palais and Fates packs being opened. This is still a beautiful, stunning card. I do like the Gardevoir. I just love the artwork. It just looks so serene. I really, really like it. Yeah, right now, I don't really know what the graded price is of this card is going to be, uh, but I just want to get it and into my collection. All right, then we've got the big boy Charizard. Now, believe it or not, I'm actually not a huge fan of the shiny Mew from this set. I know some of you guys are going to be out, out for me on that one, but I'm not a huge fan of it. However, I do really like the Charizard. I think the artwork of this is absolutely fantastic. I have yet to see one, like, in my hands, whether it be in English or Japanese. We just haven't pulled it yet. This is a big money card still, and it kind of reminds me of like the Charizard VMAX, the shiny one from Shining Fates, was one of my all-time favorite Charizard artworks. I absolutely love it, and I have it in my collection, and I've got it in a PSA 10, and it's one of my favorite cards. And I kind of feel like this is actually one of my favorite Charizards that they've released in a long time. You know, I do like the Brilliant Stars one, the old art as well, which I still don't have in my collection, but they've released quite a few Charizards since then. I'm not a huge fan of the 151 Charizard, um, I do like the one from Obsidian Flames, but I mainly like this one. This one's absolutely amazing. The price of this, though, is quite pricey. It has been dropping in price. PSA 10, though, of this is going for over $600, apparently, which is actually pretty nuts. But this is still a stunning card. Over here in the UK, people send this for around about 100 for 110 which is actually not too bad. It has been dropping. I do expect to drop again, like the Gardevoir, because more and more Palais and Fates is being opened. But this is a beautiful card that I think would just go nice with some of the other big Charizards I got. And of course, then to send off to get graded and hopefully get a 10 would be amazing to have this collection of just really big Charizards that I like the look of. Then we've got the Full Art Shiny Mew. Now, you know, this isn't the most expensive card in the set, but I actually prefer this Mew than the Special Illustration Rare. I know, sounds absolutely crazy. But I do like Mew. You know, I like the Shiny Mew. I love the blue. It's really nice. Actually, one of my favorite Mew cards actually is the gold one from Celebrations. And that's absolutely stunning. And this is still a beautiful, nice card indeed. Not very expensive. I mean, I think people said it for maybe like £10, something like that. It's not hugely expensive. I haven't pulled it yet. Maybe I do pull it in Palais and Fates. Still a bit early days on Palais and Fates yet. This is still another card I'm looking down in my collection. Not hugely expensive cards. Not big chase, flashy or anything. Just 
a nice card. And then we've got my Boyente. This is a baby shiny I've yet to get. Now, if you know me, when we open up the packs on the streams, or whenever we pull Entei in any set, he is my boy Entei. It is my favorite legendary beast, my legendary doggos. I absolutely love Entei. He's just amazing. And I have the Suicune from Shining Fate, and I have, like, the amazing rare Raikou, um, but I don't have this baby shiny yet for Palian Fades. To pull the specific baby shiny is really tough. Uh, I have a couple of duplicates of others, but not even pulled the Entei once yet isn't that expensive you know i'm not breaking the bank again with this one i mean this here is going for anywhere under 10 pounds not too bad as we can see the raw price of this again isn't that expensive but it's more of the top end higher valuable cards in the baby shinies or Paladin Fates though. Okay, then we're going to go into another big card uh, from Paradox Rift, which is the Roaring Moon. Now, I actually haven't opened up any Paradox Rift. Now, the sets I haven't really touched, really. I haven't touched Palais Revolve, Paradox Rift, or Obsidian Flames. I didn't open up anything of those sets. Now, believe it or not, I actually opened up a fair amount of Scarlet and Violet base. Uh, yeah, it's kind of not a great idea. But I did. When it came out, I opened up quite a bit. So I have pretty much all the cards I want from Skull and Violet base set. I mean, they're not that exactly expensive. But from Paradox Rift, I haven't opened up much. And I do think Paradox Rift is a very good set. I just haven't opened it up. Will I open up some? Potentially. I'm not too sure yet. There isn't a huge amount of cards from this set that I really want in my collection. There's only a few. They are, unfortunately, towards the top end. But still, to me, they're like, what, the price of a booster box? So it's like, either I buy a booster box... And crack some packs and try and pull a roaring moon or just buy the roaring moon right so the roaring moon has been dropping in price uh since paradox rift there's a ton of paradox rift around at the moment booster boxes are probably the, actually some of the cheapest out there so you know the pull rates are actually not too bad in paradox rift this is a beautiful stunning card it does feature other pokemon in it which i love and you know salamence is a you know, favorite for me dragon pokemon in general are my favorite you know dragon type ice type uh you know some of my favorite ghosts as well but this one really really does uh hit home for me it's a really really awesome epic looking artwork like i say the price this has been dropping the greater price of this has been dropping i would continue to see it drop over the coming months as more and more paradox rift is being opened but this is still a really good card that i would like to get hold of similar thing with the iron valiant i do really like this again it's got my boy titar anything with tranitar in it I am after and all right it's not quite the same but he's in there anyway just the colors of this card really pops for me and this card's been dropping in value which I'm really happy with because it means it's going to be a bit cheaper for me to pick up as a rule I tend to go like I say I go for cards that I like the look of and if they're going down in price that makes it a really good time to pick up specific cards and this has been dropping even in the PSA 10 price going from 240 now down to that 140 it's dropped over $100 in a PSA 10 you know and look look at the card values I mean look at $30 $40 a pop I mean that's actually pretty cheap it's such a big card from that set then Groudon Groudon is a oh, beautiful card this card is epic like it just gives me like kind of like Godzilla vibes which is I really really like and I really like Groudon you know Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire were my are my two favorite pokemon games and my favorite gen gen 3 is my favorite Rowlon is absolutely amazing this artwork is amazing and it's just a normal illustration rare it's not even a special illustration rare which is crazy it's holding good value to be fair for an illustration rare similar to like the magic art we had in power day revolved uh in paradox rift this Groudon's doing pretty well and you can see the graded price actually is holding steady you know, PSA 10, $161. Look, we're talking about normal illustration, man. That's actually pretty good going. Holding a pr pretty hefty price tag, though, um, but definitely one I want to grab. Now, to finish off Paradox Rift, we have the Altaria EX. This is a special illustration rare. This, to me, gives me the Aerodactyl vibes from Lost Origin. You know, you got the Aerodactyl flying over, and you see all everything down below and everything. It looks cool. It looks really nice, and I like this. This is a very picturesque style card, and I really like it. Altaria as a Pokemon, I'm not... Uh, you know, I wouldn't say it's one of my favorite or anything like that. I just like the look of this artwork. I don't know why. It just looks really, really nice. And it's not that expensive. You know, between $25 to $30 actually isn't that bad. PSA 10 prices dropped like crazy from $160 down to $90. I expect this card to continue to drop and it to be more of the cheaper options for a special illustration rare from Paradox Rift, which means it's a great opportunity for me to pick up. I right, go into 151. I have yet to get this Zapdos. I might just buy it, to be honest. And I haven't opened up Watch 151. I know that a lot of you guys have just been going in hard on 151 since its release. But the truth of the matter is, for myself, I've opened up maybe 20 packs. That's it. I've opened up barely anything of 151. Not like I don't 
enjoy the set is i don't know it's just something about it. like for me i don't treat it as a scarlet and violet era set i kind of feel like it is a standalone set there's nothing wrong with that i felt the same with celebrations but there was just something about it that didn't really appeal to me that i wanted to jump in now obviously i'm an og you know i from you know red and blue upwards you know i've been been doing it long enough and a lot of these cards do hit home however i am getting a bit tired of the original 151 i would like to see gen 2 gen 3 get some more love uh in sets and have specific sets for it not just always going back to the original 151 now i can't deny there's some fantastic cards in this set like this Zapdos. articuno is my favorite all-time pokemon it's amazing and Yes, Articuno is in this artwork. I know it's Zapdos, but it is in this artwork. And that's pretty much the main reason why I want it. It features all three legendary birds. I collected the legendary birds from Hidden Fates, so I own all of the cards that feature all three of them. Same from Chin and Rain. I have all three of the legendary bird alt arts, all graded. So anything for me that have the three legendary birds really does hit home. This card is holding somewhat of a good value raw. PSA price, though, has been falling like crazy. I mean, from $350 down to $114 is pretty rough. I expect the population cap of this to keep going up as more and more packs of 151s being opened. Beautiful card. This is the one, the my big chase card to be fair from this set, but still really nice. Then we have the Squirrel. I actually want all three of the uh, Evolution lineup. We're not gonna show all of them in this video, but all three of them, Charmander, Bulbasaur, Squirrel. I want all of them. They are holding very well, even though they're illustration rares and most of the other stuff from 151 has kind of trickled down i wouldn't say dropped drastically but it's trickling down the more and more it's getting opened right but these are holding really good value like we talked about the crowd on holding good value i mean the squirrel between 25 and 30 dollars raw obviously the psa 10 price is rough i mean look at that 40 dollars in a psa 10 over 300 already that's crazy i expect these to be you know a lot cheaper in the in the future but right now it's still a good time to pick these up um squirrel of course here we've got the charmander this is between like 25 a bit more than the squirrel but still holding around 30 over in the uk this tends to go for about 25 30 pounds depending on the quality but the uh, graded price of this has actually shot up we looked at the squirrel 40 dollars. look at this 145 interesting we don't know how accurate that is but that's one thing to take into consideration but still a beautiful stunning card and then of course then the bulbasaur as well squirrel's my favorite then i'll say the bulbasaur then the charmander last um but yeah really really nice and yeah, I would obviously want the full evolution line of all of them, but the stars for me are more important. Then we have Obsidian Flames. Now, there are two cards I want from Obsidian Flames. One I've already got, which is the Nine Tails Illustration Rare. Wasn't that expensive. And then we have the Charizard. You know, is the biggest card in the set. Very similar to the Palais and Fates one, but this one's a lot cheaper. All right, this one is a lot cheaper. I mean, over here, I've seen it sell for about 50 on average. Here, we're looking at between 50 to 60, I would say. Um, really depends on quality, of course, uh, and the greater price. I mean, what on earth's gone on here? Apparently, it was 1.6k at one point, uh, and then dropped down to uh, $300. $300 is actually pretty good, you know, for a card that's only, you know, 50, 60. That's actually pretty strong. There is a lot of this already in a PSA 10. A lot of people said that the uh, Scotland Violet cards are a lot harder to grade. I haven't graded any yet, so it'll be really interesting to see about the card quality. If that is the case, then a lot of PSA 10s will hold a lot more value because it'll be a lot harder to get 10s. So, uh, yeah, it would be interesting. But I am looking at this. I'm not opening up any Obsidian Flames to try and pull this. I'm not even going to try. I can buy one, you know, a Charizard for half the price of a box. So, kind of a no-brainer there. And then we've got my boy Tita. I have the Sleepy Trantar from Battle Stars, one of my favorite old arts of all time. And we have the Tita from Palais Revolved. Now, I haven't really opened up any uh, Palais Revolved at all. And there are a few cards I do like. Not some I'm really after. Same with the owner. I like it. But I wouldn't say I'm like going head over heels for it. The Tita, this is a beautiful card again. Another illustration rare that's holding pretty good value just for a normal illustration rare. PSA 10 has been dropping, did go from 240 down to 150. Kind of obvious, you know, is the way it go is. You know, obviously Palais Evolved super cheap right now to get booster boxes. Tough pull rates though. That's the downside. Tough pull rates. So I don't know whether or not I am gonna be looking at you know cracking open some Palais Evolved. I might do down the line, but right now Tita is the only one really I want from Palais Evolved. So there you have it guys, those are some cards from Scarlet and Violet era that I am after to add into my collection. Uh, I will do a video at some point going through what I do have in my collection because I know a lot of you guys would like to see um, what cards I you know, have been collecting. This year I do want to focus on expanding my single card collection. It hasn't grown at all in 2023. I didn't really open up much product and on top of that I didn't really 
go out to seek cards that I really like. I'm still on the hunt for tag team cards. I like to collect just whatever tag team cards I can get hold of for a decent price. But from Scarlet and Violet, I haven't opened up much. So there are still a ton of cards that I'm missing from these sets that I want to add into my collection. But that is my goal this year is, like I say, to expand it. And I go for cards that I like the look of. But I want you guys to let me know down in the comments what are your favorite cards that you are after or that you have in your collection from Scarlet and Violet. I would love to hear it. And if you've got any pictures of your favorite cards or just of your collections as well, then make sure to share it in the Discord and the Discord link will be in the description below or tag me in it on Instagram and I would love to see what your collections are like because it's really interesting and I find it exciting to be fair. Uh, down the line, I would love to just like open my folder and just have pages and pages of just awesome cards and artwork of my favorite Pokemon. And that would be amazing but there will be an upcoming video where i'll be going through sealed product that i'm also looking at picking up this year to add in my collection uh last year didn't really buy much mainly because things were very very expensive in life but this year i am looking at trying to add some things into my sealed collection whether or not it'll be sword and shield skull and violet or older we'll have to wait and see but if you want to know what are my favorite sets to collect are then make sure to click on the video screen right now and if you watch more pokemon content guys you know what to do make sure that subscribe button all right guys that's it for me in this video thank you all so much for watching you guys are legends and i'll see you in the next one